Do you find the question of airworthiness confusing? If you were handed a set of aircraft logbooks, would you be able to determine if the appropriate maintenance and inspections are complete? In this video, we will share the FAA's definition of airworthy, then demonstrate how to review maintenance logs to prove airworthiness inspections have been done, and we'll end with two tips to make sure your checkride airworthiness review goes more smoothly. Let's jump in with the FAA's definition of airworthy. 14 CFR 3.5A notes that airworthy means the aircraft conforms to its type design and is in a condition for safe operation. Now, we won't take the time in this video to walk through the type design and airworthiness certification process, but if you'd like to learn more about that, please review 14 CFR Part 21 and Order 8130.2J. In the meantime, by definition, the aircraft had to conform to that type design to receive a standard airworthiness certificate. During reviews and stage checks, I sometimes ask candidates if the airworthiness certificate expires. So what do you think? Does it? Well, the FAA notes that a standard airworthiness certificate remains valid as long as the aircraft meets its approved type design, is in a condition for safe operation, is registered within the U.S., and maintenance, preventative maintenance, and alterations are performed in accordance with 14 CFR Parts 21, 43, and 91. How can we determine if the maintenance and preventative maintenance and alterations have been appropriately performed? Well, this is where the maintenance logs come in. If you have seen the maintenance logs, you know they can be a little bit confusing. For single-engine aircraft, there are at least three logbooks. An aircraft log, an engine log, and a propeller log. However, if the aircraft is older, there may be multiple copies of each of these. With this plethora of logbooks, most students' first question is, well, where should I be looking? And their second question is, what am I looking for? <laughs> Before we jump into where to look, let's quickly review the acronym AAVIATES, which reminds us to look for the following. Airworthiness Directive Compliance, Annual Inspections, VOR Testing if we'll be flying under IFR, 100-hour Inspections, and Altimeter, Transponder, ELT, and Static System Inspections. While this order makes it easier to remember what to look for, the items are really not grouped as you'd find them in the logbooks, so let's group them a little differently. I suggest grouping the annual, 100-hour, and ELT inspections together, then altimeter, transponder, and pedostatic inspections, and finally, we'll review the airworthiness directives and VORs on their own, and I'll explain why we group them this way as we go along. Let's start with the annual, 100-hour, and ELT inspections. So why do I recommend grouping these together? Well, first, both annual and ELT inspections need to have been completed within the past 12 calendar months. Since this is true, they're often, but not always, done at the same time. Here's an example of an ELT inspection documented within an annual's log entry. Second, while some manufacturers have a specific 100-hour inspection, in many cases, the annual and 100-hour inspections are the same, with three major exceptions. The first exception is when they're required. All aircraft not operated under an approved progressive inspection plan must have an annual inspection. However, aircraft that carry persons other than crew members for hire or that are provided by any person giving flight instruction for hire are also required to have 100-hour inspections. The second exception is when they must be done. An annual inspection must be accomplished within the past 12 calendar months and a 100-hour inspection must be accomplished within, well, the last 100 hours. The last exception is who can do them. An A&P can do a 100-hour inspection, while an annual must be accomplished by a mechanic with inspection authority. If you're interested in what's included in these inspections, 14 CFR 43 Appendix D lists the scope and detail required. But let's take a look at where to find these log entries. Since during the annual or 100-hour inspections, the airplane, the engine, and the propeller are inspected, you should see annual or 100-hour log entries in each of these logbooks. However, the ELT reference will only appear in the airplane logbook. To see the most recent maintenance or inspections, you should start at the end of the newest log and look backwards. Once you find the annual 100-hour or ELT inspection, look at both the date and the tack times to ensure that they have occurred within the allotted time. A couple of notes. First, if you don't see any 100-hour inspections but you're renting your aircraft from the flight school, check to see if annual inspections have been completed every 100 hours. An annual can be used in lieu of a 100-hour inspection. 
In fact, you won't find anything labeled 100-hour inspections in our logbooks because Great Plains Aviation does an annual inspection every 100 hours. Also, within the annual or 100-hour inspection, you will likely also see a note stating that ADs up to that date have been checked. This is part of the documentation required for AD compliance. Now to the next group of inspections. I group the altimeter, transponder, and pitot-static inspections together because they're all due within the same time period, 24 calendar months. And because of that, they're usually completed and logged in the same maintenance record. You should be able to find the latest inspection in the aircraft maintenance log. Here's an example. Notice that the log entry states that all three have been completed and includes the results of the altimeter testing. Finally, there are the two outliers, the VOR and the airworthiness directives. The VOR testing needs to have been conducted within the past 30 days and can be logged anywhere. Our school uses a log sheet within the dispatch binder. The log should have the date, the location, the type of test, the error, and the signature of who performed the test. Keeping track of airworthiness directives is a little more complicated. Because ADs can be related to the airframe, the engine, or any appliance, and they can be either one-time or recurring, they're usually tracked in a separate log. Ours looks like this. I would recommend taking a glance through this to see which ADs apply to your aircraft and how the mechanic documented compliance. Okay, we've covered where to find all the required inspections, but how can we make this easier for our check ride? Well, I'm going to suggest you do two things. First, make a maintenance or airworthiness cover sheet and take it with you. This sheet lists each of the inspections, when they were last completed, and when they're next due. I've put a link to a downloadable copy in the video description below. Filling out this worksheet demonstrates that you know what to look for and that you went through the logs prior to your check ride. The second tip is to take sticky notes and bookmark and label the documentation for each of the inspections in the logbook. This makes it quick and easy to turn to the right page should the DPE want to see the actual logbook entries. If this video was helpful, please comment, hit the thumbs up, and consider subscribing. Finally, if you're looking for more flight training information, I would recommend watching this video next. <laughs> As always, thank you for watching, fly safely, and I will see you next time.